Hey everyone, Toronto Ty here outside Canada's Wonderland's front gate here on September 15th, 2018, really early in the morning. And we are here for uh, roller coasters, eh? Yep, gonna be a fun filled event uh, here with the American Coaster Enthusiast Canada Division. Uh, if you guys are here, hopefully I will have met you uh, at some point. And if you're not, well, I'm going to show you the best of the event. So over here in the staging area by Behemoth's Helix, uh, you'll notice they have once again increased the, uh, the size of this area, of the fenced-in uh, section at least. Um, uh, they've got a few new track pieces there and some new columns over there on some flatbeds. Uh, so I'm sure this is probably just about the least interesting thing that you guys will see in this video, but still interesting nonetheless. And just over here in this uh, area of the parking lot, they've got more rebar cages uh, set up over there. So many footings uh, still to be poured. Um, and uh, and then you've got these rings here. You can see they've got uh, some spray paint on the ground here from marking off where the uh, vertical sections will be attached to these rings. So that's pretty cool. And just getting a look here at the other side of the uh, staging area. Uh, yeah, they definitely have uh, quite a few new track sections uh, right over there. Uh, they've got so many now uh, all in here ready to go. And uh, yeah, and then of course they've got uh, more parts here for, uh, I'm assuming expanding the crane, um, and a couple new lift columns as well. And all of this stuff is soon going to be put right over there. Isn't that amazing? You can already see Yukon Striker from out here in the parking lot. Good morning, my name is Pat Walker. I work for Canada's Wonderland. I think I've seen a couple of spaces I've seen in the past. Hi, Pat. Uh, welcome again this year. Uh, we're just going to go through a little uh, introduction on the Backlot Stunt Coaster, formerly the Italian job, built in 1990. Uh, sorry, Jim Shea started the company back in 96 with Premier Rides, that's uh, our first uh, launch coaster. Uh, this one was put in in 2005, uh, linear induction motors. It travels at about 64 kilometers an hour uh, in about three seconds in order to get it up the, uh, the, the, the spiral case up to the top and then gets it on the track. Uh, we're gonna go in, I can show you the stainers, the launch zone, the 17 sets of stainer motors that fire that train out magnetic forces. Uh, there's no chain drive on this one at all, so it's just all propulsion from the magnetic fields that's generated in the lift. So the, the biggest part of this ride is the launch, as far as I can see. I mean, it's the, it's the best part of the ride to be able to pin yourself in the back of that seat as it's launching up the helix. Um, as you can see on each there's a set of stator motors that are underneath the walkway on the left hand side, but you can see the bank of stator motors that are on the right hand side. Those are creating the magnetic field and it's evenly distributed on both sides of the car. On each side of the car there is an aluminum fin which is part of the propulsion system that hangs down that uh, is basically launched through that eddy current that's being produced. Uh, we have 17 sets of limbs here. They range in different size and different... Uh, uh, we have the first three sets, which is high torque, uh, low speed, which just gets that car started. The first car is the only one that sits in a set of limbs right now. And then as it goes, it gets into the, the other three or two cars, pick it up as well. And then it becomes high speed at the end. We need about 22, 23 meters per second to get up that launch. If it doesn't go, it defaults and we come back into the mechanical brakes that are at the bottom uh, of the drop right here for the rollback. Uh, we have also, we have magnetic braking in this as well, which is more for slowdowns. It's not really a stationary. We need the mechanical fixed brakes for a stationary hold of the trains because the eddy current braking system will allow it to uh, leak and basically roll through it. 
Um, so the ride does consist of the track that goes up into the warehouse effect. As some of you might know, it used to have the, the big effects here. Unfortunately, uh, ours does not have that feature anymore. We do have a big tunnel that runs underneath. It comes out of the warehouse, it runs through here, goes back underneath the track there and, and comes out over here. If you're interested in seeing that, I'd be more than happy to show you that. Uh, I've left that side door open. I do have the ride locked out, so the uh, staff cannot move that train until we're finished with it. Any questions on it? Yes, sir. Uh, so why were the effects uh, removed? Well, part of it back in the day was is when we had the Paramount and it was themed to the Italian job. Um, that's basically it in a nutshell. When uh, Cedar Fair bought us out, uh, they had to change the theming. So we kind of modified the cars a wee bit to get away from that Mini Cooper style. Uh, we put the NASCAR fronts on them, changed them up a wee bit, and you know, we had to move away from that, that side of it. So we renamed it as uh, Backlash Night Coaster and did the best we could with what we had, and that's the direction that we went. Pat, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Weren't the cars supposed to fishtail and uh, bump when they went down the stairs, but they never ever did? Well, to be honest with you, they do still fishtail. Uh, on the back end of these, they do have a sway. You may not notice it as much when you're riding, but they all do sway. Um, when you get into that uh, staircase effect, what there used to be underneath the seat for vibrators, and that gave you that sensation of vibrating down through that staircase effect. So there was different theming that was added to the ride itself to accommodate that movie side of things. It was eliminated after a while. There are all the uh, limbs right there, all in a row. So the air gap on each side of the standard motor and that fin is four millimeter. So when we get into that launch, it's very critical that we keep our trains tuned up as well as our, our limb fins that are on the car. Uh, what we try and do there is the trainer, the better we are, they don't run as much. There's not as much noise. As well as we also cool them because there's so much uh, power generated through the stator motors heat transfers onto the aluminum fins and we actually have a cooling system that's been implemented to keep those fins cool which in turn mm -hmm. makes them as straight as you possibly can. Because there's such a rigid fix on, on the train itself, if you don't cool them down, they become distorted and then they start to work and then uh, that gap flows out. Four millimeters not a lot and not that much. It makes a huge difference. So, well, here's the story on that. But because we have a problem with frost in the neighborhood, what we do is we line this, and unfortunately we don't take it back up again in the spring when we open, but we line it with the bubble wrap. You know, the old story is that we've been doing it since day one and we're afraid to get away from it. It's very important to keep the track and the stator motors aligned with each other. We're on two independent systems. One's on the, the track element, which is all cake on, and then we have the stator motors. We just don't want them to move, and so far we've been really successful with what we have there. So it's like it works just to It works. You know, we don't want to change it to find out we're going to get a burden with it next year. So, you know, we have an attachment that goes on the track that runs the rails and we actually put through the stator motors to keep them alive. Follow the alignment of the track and the not perfectly aligned, so we follow the track and the It just makes it very successful. We learn a little bit, and that's one of the things we try to keep them very straight. With the alignment of the track, the track has a bit of a swoop to it, so it's a great motor. So overall, what happens is it's a choice of riding on the track, and it's good to kind of sit with each other. The, the actual limp fins are always trying to center that track through the stator motor from the curve. If we have one half of one set of stator motors go down, it throws the whole train off and you'll hear the clicking of the car. So that will also give us an indication not only from the PLC side of things, but we can hear it if there's something not right. So we can make that adjustment. One more question. Out of all the rides in the park, does the track consume the whole lot, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. This one in Sledgehammer, I think it's <laughs> this one here really does. When this one was built, they brought in their own transformer just for this unit. Wow. So it generates so much power in such a short span. That set of shipping containers up there are all the controllers just for the state of motor. 
Down as far as mechanically or electrically? I'll move electric. Well, with our team of electricians, they're on it as soon as possible. can and How long? It can vary depending on what the scenario is, whether it's a PLC, whether it's a contact problem. With these stator motors, because we have 17 sets, we can actually shut a bank down and not notice it. And then we can come back in on an afternoon when the car slow and do the repairs and change the state of the car. So they're all they're starting to become more hermetically sealed now, which is a lot better for us. We keep the moisture out of them. And in the winter time, we actually run through the current through the ball to keep that moisture out of them. It's important to keep them dry, so we actually charge them up in the winter time to keep the moisture out of them as well as the cover. Currently standing under that spot, sun coasting, right in the tunnel, which is pretty awesome. It's not the tunnel I wanted to go in today, but still pretty awesome. So we still check the printer and we don't have anything on board with air and hot. We have a database and we go on engineering, all we don't have that sort of thing. And then it's just an idea of the screens and you know, how loose our cranes are. Okay, so we have about 10 minutes, so then which is called Jump 2 for Hus, which is out of Germany. Uh, hydro Control is the ones that designed the hydraulic systems and the electrical that went into this ride. It's a one of a kind. Uh, there's one hydraulic cylinder that runs this ride in the center of the ride. The pull pushes up on the main center. Up, on, uh, and, and that basically lifts all the arms up. As it's yeah, spinning, as the arms lift, the ride starts to accelerate, similar to the way it does with the, uh, somebody that's out doing figure skating. You know, they get up into that figure. Well, this thing does the exact same thing. It wants to excel every time it does the jump. So the hydraulic system will run down into the pit. It's got 1,200 liters of hydraulic oil. When we have a little leak, we measure that in barrels. It's a big barrel. So we don't have a little seepage, we have a, we have a leak. Um, and it generally goes down into the pit, and then you get your rubber boots on and go clean up that. It doesn't happen often, but it has the potential. It is a hydraulic system, and most systems are designed uh, with a lot of hy hydraulic O-rings in place in the valves. <laughs>
There's just a few more here, Jordan, and then we can go. Yep, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Right in here. Okay. Do you know if Emily made it in here? Yes, she did, and, I, and she's out. Okay. Just want to make sure she's out. Last guy. What a view. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm going to give you a brief intro. You don't want to hear me talk, you want to see that. Um, <laughs> my name's Paul, and I'm the manager of electrical and technical services at the park. I've been here for about 19 or 20 years, um, mostly as a rise electrician, but I just got promoted. Um, what we're going to do, um, I'm actually going to take you guys up the path here. This is a construction site, but I've gotten a little bit of permission to, to take you up the path. You can't cross the fence lines. Can't go any further than I walk, um, but it's going to give you a good view of the, what we've got built so far. If you have any questions, just yell them out. I'll do my best to answer them. If, uh, if I can't answer, I guess you guys have a QA later with Peter Switzer. He'll be the guy to answer them for you. Well, it wasn't too long ago that we were uh, walking along this pathway. We've already got the A-frame there. Boy, they're getting it set up. Probably tell. Oh, yeah? This right here, this lift section right here is actually two separate uh, pieces of track that have already been attached together right there. And as the guys at uh, CW Mania and Park Journey said, uh, you know, they, uh, they're getting everything prepared down here on the ground before lifting it up, which is why right up there, it looks all ready to go. This is pretty awesome. back along the uh, splash path right here you can see they've got uh, some of the fence here uh, uh, some of the pathway fence taken down uh, I saw over on the other side uh, right over there they uh, had to take down some of the lamp posts as well um, and it looks like they took the lights off of this one uh, obviously just to protect them keep them looking awesome for uh, once they get put back up at the beginning of next season. Once this is all done. Not too long, but still feels pretty far away. Right there, track getting right down to ground level. Those were pretty fast. Looking right down. Possibly for haunts, we're thinking smoke. Into this smoke. tunnel. Nothing really planned for this. We, we think just the really the dark and then back out into the, the sunlight is going to be pretty cool. Really awesome. And uh, yeah, just really, really cool. And as somebody here mentioned, there are probably going to be quite a few foams littering the ground I'm sure right they're under they're here. All right, everyone. Has a bit of a uh, mid-video reprieve here at Roller Coasters, eh? Uh, I wanted to do this week's trivia time. So, first and foremost, huge shout out to Maverick Archer and CSRT Forever uh, for both correctly stating that Bedrock was the uh, name of that section of Planet Snoopy uh, before, uh, uh, back before it became Nickelodeon Central. 
uh, which was then later turned into Planet Snoopy. So Bedrock themed to the Flintstones. It had attractions including uh, Barney's Burgers, Flintstone Flyboys, Boulder Bumpers, uh, Bedrock Dock, and uh, Hot Rock Raceway. I think that's all of them. Uh, if it's not, I'll probably edit it here. <laughs> um, but for this week's trivia time, I want you guys to let me know in the comments below who was it that raised the Canadian flag on opening day 1981 at Canada's Wonderland. If you can let me know who it was in the comments below, I'll give you a shout out in my next video. Okay, so I have absolutely no idea what these things are, but uh, there are a lot of them, and there are a lot more out over that way. Uh, but clearly, they have been doing all kinds of uh, other work around here. They have removed part of Timberwolf Falls' queue uh, over there, as you can see. Um, and uh, they have a crane on site here. Uh, so definitely, uh, I'm assuming, pouring more footings and all that getting stuff ready for, uh, for the trench. That's, uh, that's going to be between the, uh, the loop and the reverse Immelman. So, awesome, but still looks really weird over here. Um, and I know I'm going to get a bit of a different angle here in a second, but yeah, it just looks really weird from over here. Just looking out over the tree line, over Timberwolf Falls, you can see the lift of Yukon Striker already starting to uh, head up into the sky. Obviously it still has quite a ways to go, but really incredible that you can see it all the way from over here by uh, Canyon Trader already. This is really, really cool, even though it still looks so sad to me. I miss the trees. So for some reason, Flying Canoes is uh, temporarily closed. Uh, they put the sign out, so clearly it's been down for a little bit. I'm not sure what's going on here, but uh, it's always sad to see the new ride closed for, uh, for any reason, really. Hopefully they get it back up and running soon. All right, so I am here with Ken from Ace, and uh, can you just tell us, uh, you know, what, what was involved with like planning this event? Just the planning alone has been too much worth of work. I've had a really good uh, assistant rep team with Jordan and Mike. Uh, Mike is our rep. Jordan and Paul helped me out a lot with this. It's been a lot of fun doing it. We're really glad that everybody was able to come by and, and, and take part in it. You know, the staff have been fantastic for us. Our guests have been fantastic. It's been a hot day, it's been a busy day, but we had a good day. And it's been a lot of fun, so we're really glad everybody came by. Awesome. Looking and forward to the Yukon Striker next year, though. That's just going to be a great event. Absolutely. So, if people want to be uh, part of next year's event or want to be. Uh, Check us out, go on Ace, join Ace, you can do a tribal membership, whatever you need, and we're here. And what's, what's all included with the membership? What's, uh, what's the, membership, the big deal? Um, bi monthly newsletter, quarterly uh, full color magazine. Um, discounts at the different parks and events and attractions. Of course, you get events every weekend. And when we do an event, we do an event right. You have early ride time, late ride time. You have meals, you have goodies, you have everything. And our event here at Wonderland is truly one of the best, best regional events in, in Ace by far. Well, I have to absolutely agree. This is the best uh, coaster event I've ever been to. That's what we like to hear. It's, it was absolutely incredible, and I'm definitely going to be coming to all future Ace events if I at all possible. Well, you're can, welcome so. back anytime. <laughs> Any questions? You know, shoot me a message. Kate Jones, EaseOnline.org. Awesome. Thank you so much no for uh, putting this together. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Yeah. So somehow this morning, I did not look up from the tunnel, uh, but as you can tell, they have some more supports for the uh, actual A-frame, uh, ready to go up. Um, apparently this is not an A-frame, this is a V-frame, I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm not in construction, uh, but 
these supports uh, appear to be much larger uh, than, than the other columns, which is interesting. And then over on the hill here, you can see over on that side, they've got some orange markings. They've got a weird orange tag over here, which says 223.62. I don't know what that means, but it's got markings on the edge of the uh, concrete there as well. Um, so that's really strange in my mind. But then over here, you have another patch of uh, orange spray paint on the ground, including R, which indicates to me that it is the right side of the support. So, that over on that part of the hill is probably left, and that makes sense because they have not put in the footings on the hill here for the track going back over, and I did confirm that with, uh, uh, with uh, the construction team here. So, that's really, really cool, but I still have no idea what this orange marking here means. If you guys know, please let me know, uh, and I will update you guys next week. So until next time, have a good one. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to comment down below for anything that you'd like me to cover in the next video. Subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you get notified every time I post new videos.